saw. So, um, my my old mucker, Seb, Sebastian Wilkinson, sent me these um, these positions just to see whether I could get them. And I'm wondering whether I'm going to be able to. How long I'm going to be able to go before the cat wants to come in? And he's lurking already, and I can feel my frustration rising because he can't come in himself and I have to open the door and then he wants to go out as soon as he's come in so 6-5 and yeah I made sure to ask for the score the score obviously doesn't always make so much of a difference key position so we're trailing 0 2 to 9 and we've cubed Okay, he's still not coming in, he's sort of, okay, good. So we've cubed, and um, I'm going to try and resist counting the race, because I always just tend to do that as a knee-jerk reaction, um, just to, you know, give me a, an easy answer to the question as to whether we should be coming out or not. But I don't know if this in this position if that's the first thing you want to do. Um... I notice, obviously, I mean, I don't know how much I could say that, that is obvious to people watching, but um, if you hit on the three point, then you leave two blots. That can't be good. And the pure hitting play is 13, 7, 8 to 3, which leaves four, five blots strewn around. And. If you play that, what are you hoping for? A fan, which is obviously a 25% shot, so it's not very likely. And I mean, the first real play that's, that I did have a, a glance when I set these positions up and saved them. I mean, I didn't really analyze them, or, but my, my, my instinct was that you play this, what people are now calling this double falcon play. So, thematically, in this position, you've got your structure, you don't want to fuck with your structure, and so by elimination you want to... The play that doesn't mess with the structure is the play that does something with these two back checkers. Now, if you come out to the nine point, then of course you'll see that all his numbers are diversified. So he has like a bunch of fours, threes, twos and ones to point on your sorry little ass on the on the five point. So if you're gonna come out then you're gonna come out with both to the fourteen and the and the and the uh fifteen. Now like it's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination to leave him um what is it, twenty twenty two shots because sixes and fours are hitting as well. Um, but if you get missed, then you, well, what have you achieved? Now I'm starting to doubt myself. Well, if you get missed, the idea is that you've, you've maintained the structure and the structure is your asset. Um, if you get hit, he's got a one point board. So you... The only numbers that hit two checkers are two, one, and three, two, unless I'm mistaken, if you come out with both. So 32 times in 36, you're not going to get hit with both checkers. Um, and assuming he doesn't roll boxes, then you're going to have... Um, you're going to have some returns. So let's say you come out with the 6-5. I'm not going to put it on the board. We're just going to have to train ourselves to visualize it. So say I come out with both and he hits with a 2-4. A so he's going to hit there on this point and then bring the man, the same man to there. Then we're going to have a man here that's going to be hitting back with basically every 3 apart from 3-6. So surely that's got to be good. Where we get a variation, where we get we get like uh, nine return shots, 
and um and then we get to send another man back and then he's lost his midpoint to be honest i haven't really got a clue with this position but i just can't see anything but coming out with both um that's the player would make um i mean the hitting plays what else i mean just to show that i've considered all the plays oh, there's like 10 coming into the four point with the with the six and then maybe 10 4 10 5 i mean that could be right but it's very difficult if you play if you play this man here for obviously that's burnt but what's the difficult thing in this position is if you imagine you've got a man here it's going to be difficult to actually make this five point just having men in the, on your on your midpoint on your eight points so yeah i mean i don't really know i'm not going to spend more time here is the answer let's see let's start with a low ply i don't think it's going to make any difference and I was completely wrong. So ten five ten four. So I did consider it. I didn't even consider the the two down play. Um, so my play looks like it's um, pretty much one of the worst. And I mean, I confessed I didn't really understand the position, but hitting was wrong. Okay, so my play is not. It's not a hundred. It's less than a hundred. So. Um, I'm okay with that. Ten five, ten four is very strange play to put a man, to burn a man there. Much more natural to clear the mid. I don't know why I didn't even consider clearing the mid. I suppose I was just trying to be too clever. Um, anyway, that's a very difficult play, and um, I can see why Sebastian was um keen to to um to um catch me out and i am caught out okay so that was the first position so i've got zero out of five as predicted oh no hold on hold on hold the phone oh no oh no no i got excited I just thought, yeah, okay, no, we can we can scratch that. I'm just doing plus plus because it's just a habit. So let's go to the next position. Do you want to save it? Yeah, it's going to save number two. Oh, six one. Oh, so we're leading four two to nine. And of course, the natural play is just to hit on the the five point. It leaves twos and ones. But I mean, my first instinct is it doesn't look so bad to give it up. But then you spot, of course, that if you come in and you play ten to four, you've kept your structure and you've duped his fours. So numbers like five one for him, five two, six five isn't so great. And so now I'm leaning towards after my thirty second analysis, I'm leaning towards coming in and coming into the four point. I mean, if you don't hit, then I don't see why you wouldn't lift this this man leading, trying to kind of maintain some sort of um position where you're not going to give your opponent a, 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 a situation where he can cube you um, cube you either in or out cube you in to a, 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 a sort of gammonish position that you have to take that's the kind of situation you want to avoid obviously even just being two points up on the score in a nine point match so if you don't hit, you're probably going to play 10 to 4. But let's just consider, if you come in, you could, of course, come out to the 16. Again, that dupes the 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 4s. But then it leaves 5s and 1s for no reason. So I don't see why that would be the case. So I'm going to go back to my two plays. 
Um, again, I'm trying not to count the race because I want to try and work out the play without using the race as a crutch. Um, there's always a tendency, of course, to hit on the 20 because the upside's so huge. So if he doesn't, if even if he rolls like a an ace deuce, and he hit, he comes in and he hits on the fourteen. You're you're kind of happy, and you do have some ones and threes that are going to make the five point. Um, just thinking. Again, this is like the theme here seems to be burning the man on the four point. Um, okay, I mean, again, I can see merits in both plays. I really don't know what what I would do over the board. I, because uh, I'm leading, I'm going to play ten to four, prepared to believe it's very bad. So I'm going to come in on play bar twenty four, ten to four, and he. Totally trick me because they're totally even. So I guess he also had this dilemma in his mind and took a long time, burnt some time, you know, with the situations where you don't, you've got no idea that the plays are equal because you can't be that good. And um, hitting wins more games but loses more gammons. So, okay, we don't need to say more about that. That wasn't so, in a way, it wasn't so difficult because there are only two plays, but. You never know. So number three. Yeah, okay, now so there must have been some exchange and I can't work out what the what the sequence was to get to this position. It's obviously the same game and now we've got a three one. And was this too good? Was this not a cube? I'm not gonna worry myself with the cube action. Um obviously you can hit on the twenty one point and then make with the one so you keep a broken five prime. The issue here that I see is is that your opponent has these two checkers on the 22 and the 16 connected and that I guess he's going to if he rolls comes in and then he rolls a 6 eventually he's going to be able to make this point so obviously it's a great roll to be able to put him in the air and play 6 to 5 but what you really want is to be able to eliminate um, his opportunity to to use this point as a as a um, as a sort of a defensive stronghold, you know, which makes me think like, well, maybe you can hit this and hit this, or maybe you can hit this and then play um, eight to five. Um, I think the idea is that to hit this. So if I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna play 10 to 9 for sure but then when I play 10 to 9 I don't really want to play 24 21 because it leaves him with such a good five and bear in mind we've only got a two-point board same as him so that's not ideal but I'm still tempted by this idea of eliminating the defense, the possibility of the defensive 16 point anchor for him. I mean, this is just 21 and 5 is the, like the, the sort of the nor normal play, as people would say, but it's. 
it, it's it has its drawbacks. I mean, kind of part of me wants to hit this man as well. So play six to three, ten to nine. Yeah, unless I'm missing something, what else is there? Like not hitting for some reason. Hmm, this is very tricky. Can I come back to this? Well, I, if I was had to say an order of best, that would be even tri trickier. I mean, well, how would you rate these plays? So, I mean, I would include, definitely include 21 and 5 in, in one of my sort of top three. If I had to choose a play which wasn't terrible, I would do that. But if I had to choose the top play, I think I might, I would include nine and five for sure. The idea being that if he comes out and hits, he's got a blotting board. And also you've got all these returns on him. So nine and five is ten nine eight to five is definitely a play. And then this idea of twenty one and nine, which seems so silly, but mm. this is very, very difficult. Um, okay, I'm going to go with, just to, to save time and not, you know, pretend. I could possibly work it out if I really thought about it. I'm going to go with um, 9 and, and 5, so hit and make, make the 5 point. But then I'm going to reserve this 9 and 21 as my second play. And then 21 and 5 as... As third best. I mean, I, I really don't know. Let's just see. 21 and 5 was just the simple play. And I just overthought it. So 9 and 5. Is, is a huge blunder. 9 and 21. Oh, 9 and 21 is second. Okay. Interesting. I'm just going to have a quick look just to see if I can learn something here. So, I would still be inclined to hit this man. I know it's a sort of a, maybe a, a, just a bit of a subtlety, but Maybe it's too much. Hmm. All right, so I've got one out of three, which is okay. Now we go on to, I think, number four. So should we swap the ward around? Does that do it? And we've got a three one to play and we're trailing. So we're playing the other side. How would I play this? I mean, I would probably, now I'm trying not to overthink, I would probably just hit and make. I mean, there's ideas of not hitting, leaving sort of a double search which makes the two point I don't see why you would do that um, you hit you can counter prime this is obviously a trick a nasty trick that Sebastian is playing on me I'm gonna fall right into it I mean no I don't see how you can't hit because He's going to improve his position. 
you, of course you want to split but you don't need to split immediately unless I put this position in wrong I mean of course you can hit and play to the 13 but that doesn't seem to make sense so what's the the sort of quiz factor play I don't even see the quiz factor play I mean not hitting just playing 16 to 13 16 to 14 and then you have the same problem in a way you've got got to hit to kind of defend yourself against leaving more shots mm, I mean if splitting and making then he just he's just gonna isn't he gonna have some numbers that like four three five or he'll just point on you maybe that's the play maybe that's the play 23 and 5 so you give him like good like ones but like it's not I mean this is way beyond my ability but maybe that's the the play I don't think I would make that So you do that, he sort of makes makes a six prime. Hmm. No, I'm just gonna go with the, the obvious play. I don't really know what what's up with this position. Yeah. Did I put something in wrong? No, I, I'm gonna s s say that I didn't and go on to the next one. So I've got another point. So I got two out of four. I got two out of four. Seb tried to trick me. Oh, I see. Eight two crawl for double three. Double three. Double three. He all often we likes to talk about how you need to save the backgammon. Is this a situation where you don't save the backgammon? I mean Double one doesn't win the backgammon. Double one would win the backgammon like, what, 25% of the time? So he's got how many? Like 30, 14% backgammons if you stay. I mean, I'll never be able to work it out, but. But the difference between being him going to four to going to um difference between him going to four away as opposed to five away is quite big. Yeah, I don't I don't know these. I just I just don't know. Um Eight four. I mean, you don't really care about saving the gammon, so the only thing that you're going to be able to do is save the gammon, really. How many? So it's two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, ten numbers, and then you kind of have to come in on the do. So if you pick both men up, you're what sixty forty. Okay, I'm going to fall into the trap. I'm going to run. I I'm, I'm just haven't got the energy to think about it. Yeah. Okay, I got that right. So three out of five. Is that everything? Is that everything, my boy? Have you got no more for me? I've got three out of five. Um, pretty happy with that. Not happy with... Um, the uh, three one which was obvious and um see you guys later later's dude later's mate